Lori, we all know that NASA's mission and goals shifted dramatically in February. This morning, you said that we need to stop reliving the space program of the past and start enabling the space program of the future. That's not going to be easy. How will you, how will NASA make that happen? Well, the transformation of, of NASA, I would argue, has started well before. Uh, the president's proposal on February 1st. NASA has been moving on uh, since certainly the Apollo days and recognizing we need to do things differently and uh, what we intend to do uh, over the coming months and years is embrace uh, this change uh, rather than I think fight it. We base all of our programs on this rich history and NASA of course is one of I believe, the premier organizations on the planet. Uh, so what we have to do is move forward in a way that preserves the very best of NASA, but recognizes that what we have invested in can now be done uh, in partnership with others, and that others have a lot to bring to the table as well. Laura, you talked this morning about asking the commercial space industry to help NASA trust them and, and convince you that, that they're really ready to carry the torch forward, particularly when it comes to carrying our, our precious astronauts into space, to the International Space Station. How, as it outsources uh, these responsibilities, is NASA itself going to be able to resist micromanaging, basically having its fingers in every pie? Well, again, NASA has already started this, and if you look at what we now trust the Russians to carry, these precious astronauts to and from the space station. And think of our history. Think of NASA symbolizing the Cold War. And now we allow the Russians to uh, carry our astronauts to and from the space station. We can do this. We can trust U.S. industry that has been there with us this entire 50-year rich history uh, of NASA uh, to take a little more responsibility especially if NASA is doing exciting, cutting-edge things, pushing the frontier further uh, and faster by uh, letting go of some of the things uh, that have been in our history. But it's not going to be easy. Change, transitions are never easy. Uh, and I believe that NASA has stepped up in the past and, and will continue to be. But what some of the things that we talked about at and we'll be talking about at this conference are how to make it easier, how to work with each other better so that uh, we can uh, be more trusting. And for folks to really recognize this is uh, something that, the, that is the heart and soul of NASA. We have, in transporting astronauts, done the impossible. And I recognize this as I just go around the country and the world to the public and uh, represent what is incredible, uh, which is that history of NASA. So we don't want to have anyone believe that by moving from the past, we do not respect and honor it. It is really just building on that so that 50 years from now, we can all be as equally proud of our accomplishments. Let's look at things now from the point of view of the companies. And, and times have certainly changed. We're not just talking about these major contractors, the, the Boeings, the Lockheed Martins with very deep pockets. And we're talking about the end of these cost plus contracts. How will NASA convince these companies that it is worth their while, that their investments and in innovations will pay off? Is, is that a challenge? Well, we're not ending cost plus contracting by any stretch. In fact, this. Uh uh, so far, our authorization bill has just over $300 million on a uh, commercial procurement that would uh, be a, a fixed price or Space Act agreement for a commercial crew and about a similar amount for commercial cargo. NASA is a $19 billion agency. And when we do cutting edge, first time research, cost plus contracts are uh, absolutely appropriate vehicles to do that. And our traditional uh, partners will uh, continue with that work. We hope that they also start to recognize that they have a heritage and experience that lets them bid in a new way, that lets them partner with NASA in this, this new way. Uh, and I believe that some of the new entrepreneurial companies, employees have the exact same history, either from NASA or large aerospace industry. A lot of people talk about this being similar to the computer industry. And you had IBM 
and uh, going forward, when the new companies came in, you did not replace IBM. IBM still exists. That's why I don't like to think of it as either or. The American spirit, the entrepreneurial spirit, is what has developed innovation in this country and has largely been responsible for our economic growth. Putting that into the system of aerospace can only be positive. The heritage of the major aerospace companies, if you think about it, is exactly that. They began uh, as Martin uh, and uh, Boeing and Curtis in the early days of airplane development. Uh, some of this history is, is just wonderful to read and to recognize. Uh, we're just doing the next steps of, uh, of that, and it is all being done by the very people who got their start at the larger companies and within the government. And finally, in conclusion, what is the greatest hurdle as the nation's space program morphs and the private sector becomes more of an active partner than ever before? This morning, you, t you said we have one common enemy. It's, it's the deficit. Is that the hurdle? What is the hurdle? Uh, the common enemy of the deficit is there for us all, and I believe we have to do a much better job communicating the value of what we're doing to the public and to the uh, elected leadership of the country. We've done a really good job of that, and I think a $19 billion uh, budget is something that will allow us to keep building on our tremendous history and go further. For me, the greatest challenge, I think, is a cultural shift. It is a question of uh, recognizing that we're going to be continuing to invest in the cutting-edge space exploration that people came to NASA to do. We want to continue to attract those uh, people, our best and the brightest uh, from across the nation, to challenge themselves to do more. Having the private sector be able to take over some of this activity is exactly what the government should be most proud of. I was at the White House on Monday at a uh, science, technology, engineering, and math uh, awards ceremony. President Obama was celebrating the high school students across the nation who had gotten the science and math awards for the nation. He said, I have the NCAA winners here. I'm going to have the math and science winners, too. You guys don't get a gallon of Gatorade poured on you when you win, but you're going to get a visit to the White House. In the state dining room with these amazing high school students, a young woman I'm speaking with had developed a um, battery and solar powered car and she'd won one of the major innovation awards across the country. I know, freshman high school. I've got a couple boys who were probably still sleeping in. And uh, she had a pictorial photographs of her inspiration. The first photograph was Spaceship One. And I talked to her about that. And she said, that's my excitement. I want to fly and I want to build one. She didn't even build a rocket. She built an electric car. But that's her inspiration for doing amazing, innovative things. She also had a NASA um, meatball on her bag. She doesn't see any difference in NASA and Spaceship One. She was meeting the deputy administrator of NASA, and I was just as proud of Spaceship One being her inspiration as of, of the NASA meatball. That's where we need to go. We need to recognize uh, exploration. There, it's big enough, it's important enough, and it's hard enough for all of us. So taking the best of what we do uh, and going forward in a way that um, really lives up to our history is, I think, the biggest challenge. Lori Garver, NASA Deputy Administrator, thank you for joining us. Thank you.